obviously shut our a &E on the 18th of April last year and the 16th of April or Saturday before was the first week we came and stood out here and we've been here ever since. They managed to open the hospital again, uh, the A&E itself, for 12 hours. Um, that was on the 18th of January. It's not good enough basically though, it's, I mean, who decides to have an accident between 8am and 8pm? I believe we're the only campaign that's managed to get a reinstatement of services at an A&E in the country. But we continue to campaign for 24. <laughs> We've got 5,000 members and if there's anything going on like this we like trying to support it. I mean Charlie Hospital is very close to where we're at. Um, when there's an accident in the Viking community, this is automatically the place where they'd be brought. This is the closest hospital to Rivington. Seventy odd years old. It's been here every week for the last well over a year, and uh, so this is the anniversary of us coming doing it last time. For bikes, it's really important. We have an accident in the emergency unit. Accidents happen all the time. We're very vulnerable, and we need it. We've got it back for 12 hours a day, and we need it for 24. In 2009, the Unite Trolley branch decided that they were going to run a campaign in Trolley against austerity. So they decided that the NHS was the most important issue. From that we actually got the support of Trolling District Trade Union Council and formed an action group. But it was over small. And then, of course, when the a &E closed here, the public of Trolley came on side. Apparently it was a lack of two doctors. Two doctors left and it became unsafe. Now we have a doctor who was trying to get back into the service and being held up by capital and their recruitment process and says that there's hundreds of doctors in a similar position in the country. But all we get back is, well, there's a lack of recruitment, there's a lack of doctors, well, as far as we're concerned, there isn't. We've had a person recently, literally, collapse outside the hospital, 800 yards from the hospital, um, had to wait up to an hour for an ambulance to come, a paramedic's come, they've continued CPR. Uh, we've had uh, local people literally on the ground trying to save this woman's life, 800 yards from our A&E. Up to an hour for an ambulance to come, they finally did get her to Preston and she was put in critical care and she died. We've also had an issue uh, at Troy Hospital where there's some patient been there on a the treadmill and uh, doing the exercises because he's in an out condition and collapsed with an heart attack. And they had to eventually blue light him from Chorley Hospital to Preston, which is scandalous. I personally have been in a situation where I've been taken up to Preston Hospital because I have problems with asthma. Going in at 6 o'clock in the morning, it was 11 o'clock before I was seen, and I've had a paramedic stood with me, literally resuscitating, and he couldn't leave until I was handed over. That meant he was unable to go and attend another emergency situation until there was somebody available. If there are so many people that need treating, how on earth can one hospital cover such a big area? Because everybody was being diverted to Preston, we've got photographic evidence of up to nine to ten ambulances sat there with patients in, waiting to be discharged, while people in this area are looking for ambulance cover. And they can't get it because they're either sat all outside of Preston or outside of Wigan. My own dad. Uh, who's a blood biker, 76 in the town, has had a quadruple heart bypass and has had to go into Chorley on numerous occasions. I, the fear we have as a family of thinking that what if he doesn't get there on time, 20 minutes away, 20 minutes on a good day, let's be honest. And when he gets there, if there's people queuing to be seen and you know there's people prioritised, how can you prioritise patient care? 
they, they just don't have the facilities to, to deal with this. We need both departments. We need them in their place. Charlie's right on the motorway. We've had accidents out on the motorway since the A&E shut, and they've not been able to come right onto the doorstep and have had to fight their way through traffic at Preston. It's putting people's lives at risk. We need both A&Es, and we need them 24-7. We're at every single council meeting, at the CCG meetings, it, it doesn't stop. It, this, is, this is to show local support and to show that we're not going away. And that gives them, um, when we walk into those meetings, that gives you the backbone of... of they've got to listen when, when... When people in the country get up and say this, they've got to listen. Everybody needs to get up. Sustainability is means you've now got to run the same services on less money, and that's what being sustainable means. And all that's all that's doing is, is cutting things like we say, medicines now aren't available on prescription, services are being cut from hospitals, the expensive ones, your A&E, your maternity, mental health issues, kids. The others that are prof a bit more profitable are being sold off, all your cancer treatment, uh, the urgent cares, things like that, which, which just get a steady flow through. They're all being privatised. Um, they're ended up costing more money than they actually did originally, and far less efficient. So you've got this fragmentation now of private and public. The transformation plans are just that. It's transferring it into an American-style healthcare system. Um, if this next government do get in again, they will finish the privatisation off. There will be no more NHS and everybody within that term of office will have to start buying private healthcare. Now, luckily in Chorley, the, the politicians or the Labour politicians have managed to vote against SDP plans, which we welcome. And that really has been borne about because of pressure put on from the campaign. All I can do as leader of Cholly Council is support a vital part of our community, which is you guys here today, who have stood up and spoken for our A&E. The council has done everything they possibly can to support you, and why can we do that? It's because when we're out there knocking on doors and talking to residents, we know you represent all the residents of Cholly. We've got 12 hours that people said we will never ever get. That's the people power of Chorley and South Ribble. That's our community standing loud and clear. Rawlinson, who's one of our choir members for Sing It Big, came and said um, that they were wanting to create a group for Chorley uh, to help Chorley A&E and &E, um, we would be interested. And we love arranging songs and Coldplay gave permission so we thought, great, yeah. happened last year and it was kind of the way it was done it was nobody really knew it was, it was done it yeah and I remember just feeling so angry about it at the time you know and to be able to have the opportunity to do this feels like you um, kind of giving something back and, and hopefully helping the campaign I think these people are amazing what they've been doing for over a year now energy they've yeah. got yeah. the weather that it's rained every Saturday and my son does football on a Saturday and it's been wet for I don't yeah. know how long. It's amazing, they're yeah. amazing. But they really are. We're currently in a state where our NHS is being stripped and privatised and we're doing something about it. And we need every single one of you out there to do something about it too. You've not got a chance on the 8th of June to cast your vote and get this government out but to cutting funding for your NHS, they're privatising your NHS. We've been here, this campaign, the A&E campaign, for 12 months. 
And the people who have made this campaign has been each and every one of you. The people in Chorley, they pump their horns when they go past. Yay! Big cheer for Chorley, South Ripple. Thank you.